Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna take a look at the most disgusting strategy that you can go for for the Evolution Cup. Today we're gonna go for some timeout action and we're going to have Chansey here against Chansey in the first battle which is already kind of hilarious but we can a little bit talk about the battle here and in general how this team kind of wants to function. Chansey was recently featured in the community day running the Dazzling Gleam plus Psychic. You could opt to go for the Hyper Beam instead of the Dazzling Gleam if you really wanted to. But Dazzling Gleam is really cool in order to punish those um, Dragon-type Pokemon, which are really, really common. You saw me here swapping out into my Charger Bug. Why did I do this? There is no real sense to this. It's just because I did not want to be in a matchup where Charger Bug, or where the Chansey was against Chansey the entire time because it's worth taking five minutes straight. So I just want to speed up the process a little bit. This is why I swapped out of here. But um, this team is really, really interesting, and I have to say this team worked out super well for me. Like, if you want to have a team that is annoying, that is with Chansey, try this team out. It was actually really good for me. I climbed up some decent elo with it. But um, yeah, we got to see here already. I'm actually using a shield against the Chansey, which seems to be a little bit silly and is most likely a little bit silly. But it was worth it for me because... Um, Kind of what you want to do when you have a chance here, or like when you have a try, like a stall team basically here, you try to keep your Pokemon alive at least. Like it doesn't matter really what health they have, but like that they are alive is always kind of nice. Here in this case, I'm not going to be able to really swap out sadly because the opponent is going to go into their Vigoroth. And um, so I cannot swap into my, um, what's called, my Chansey. Or I cannot really swap into my Dusclops because I have to go into my Dusclops. My Dusclops is the only Pokemon that I can really go into. And so we can use a shield here because it's definitely the most hardest hitting move. We're also running a return, which is definitely something that came in clutch for me quite a bit. So I would recommend you to also go for a return variant if you can. If you can only afford Poltergeist and like a normal variant of this Pokemon, then do this as well. But a return definitely helped me out quite a bit. But now we're going to be able to be actually in a really good spot because we can realign our Pokemon. Hex is doing no damage. And what we kind of want to do is we kind of want to keep some energy just stored. We can still go for a Dazzling Gleam, which is basically immediately because it doesn't really matter in terms of fast move timing. But um, I kind of don't really want to be in a situation where I would be locked into my Chansey against like the Vigoroth alone. But as you're going to see here, the opponent stops into the Vigoroth and goes for a charge move. Like this is pretty silly to be fair from the opponent's part because as you're gonna see here I can just swap out deck like, the charge move doesn't do any damage like counters what actually would do damage. I can go for the return and get a big boom onto the Vigoroth knocking them out and winning on the timer. Would have won otherwise anyway so let's move on to the next one. Next opponent, Dragon Elite. So, let's see how this is going to play out. The opponent stops into the Vigoroth and we're going to go directly into our Dust Club. So, you can decide to go for the return if you really want to. Um, you can also go for the Ice Punch. I would actually more recommend you to go straight for the return. I decide to actually go for this here as well as the opponent goes for their own charge move here. It's a little bit risky because if the opponent uses a shield, you're going to be in a tricky scenario. If they don't use a shield, you're going to be in a fine scenario. Let's see what the opponent is going to do. They don't use a shield and like this, you can farm them down and just knock them out. Return really came in clutch here. In comes Dragonair. I can go for the Ice Punch against them as well, doing some super effective damage, which is even like better for me. They're going to have the Primeape in the back and this is going to be a perfect situation for us. We have two Pokemon in the back that can resist counter, which is really important for this team as well because, yeah, basically your lead cannot do anything against it. But the opponent gets a double attack buff and with this, this game is back on again. Like, this game was over basically before, but because they got the instant double buff onto their attack, the counter damage is just adding up and they try to get even more buffs here with their Night Slash. I'm just gonna go for the bait basically here because it's going to be the best play that you can go for. Exeter is going to be the uh, um, cheaper move to get, go for as well and I'm just gonna go straight for another one because I know it would knock them out and they decide to stop out here which is totally fine because it's clear as their debuff and now Chansey is can, like literally can run free I can swap into my Chansey and farm them down which is kind of hilarious because they do more damage than counter dust to us Moving on to the next opponent, we're going to have a Dusclops in the lead. Amazing lead for us. The opponent has to swap out eventually because they don't do damage. This is a very positive matchup for us. They swap out into their own Vigoroth and we can swap out into our own Dusclops. Again here, most likely going straight for the return is the better play to go for. Um, I decided to go a lot of times just for the Ice Punch because I thought, yeah, okay, if they share the return, like the risk is a little bit too high for me. But at the end of the day, I don't think a single person would have shielded the return, which is really sad for me because... Yeah, if I went for the return, as you saw before, I would have been able to just farm them down. Never mind, they actually shielded this one, so this was a good, great play from me, which is kind of hilarious, because I thought nobody did this, but I guess I forgot about this battle. They're gonna go for the body slam, which is a little bit annoying, but I can still go for two ice punches, 
And I think we're still going to be in an okay spot. As they're going to use another shield, I can go for another Ice Punch. I think they might be able to realign because of this one. It is what it is, so we're going to still be able to at least get a shield advantage. And now I can go into my Chansey. Yeah, I don't really care too much about your charge moves, man. Like, your fast move would hurt me a little bit. But your energy is going to go to waste here. And so I'm just going to go for the full farm down. And as you see here, Chansey just tanks everything. This Pokemon is so insanely bulky. It does not matter what they're going to go for. And we see the final Pokemon being the Prime Ape. Having to take a Dazzling Gleam is not going to be the best thing for this Pokemon, I would imagine. Get a boom by a Chansey. Gonna put them into the deep red health. And I would would just be able to win this matchup by staying in here but i still decide to swap out because basically i'm gonna get out the dust clubs anyway and i would be able to realign later my chance against the opponent if they would basically um yeah yeah if they they went for the return anyway so they can kind of forfeit here because this game is over but i would have been still in a very decent spot even if they would have nuked me away Next opponent, we're going to have another Dragonair here. Shadow Dragonair is going to swap out into their Vigoroth. Like, this happens the entire time here, which is totally okay for me because I have my answer for the Vigoroth with my Dust Clubs. Dust Clubs is so good in this current meta. It is wild. With Faint, like with Hex, both of them are great variants of this Pokemon. Here, we're going to be able to just let the next move go through as well. It's going to be a Rock Side, going to do some decent damage. And again, I think this opponent definitely does not use a shield here. And yeah, so like if I went for the return, this would have been so much better for me. Now I have to go for another Ice Punch, try to put them into range where I can farm them down. I don't even know if this is going to work out for me. Let's take a look. I'm going to have to use a shield here most likely, but no, they swap out into the Dragonair, keeping the energy onto the Vigoroth, which is great for them. But at the end of the day, I can still keep my Dust Clubs. And as I said before, it is really nice to keep your Pokemon alive for a potential option to later on win on timeout. And so... This, this time we're going to be able to just go ahead and go up into the matchup against the Dragonair. I can try to go for the Dazzling Gleam, which would definitely knock them out from this range. Guarantee you, this would get the KO. Let's see, it does get the KO. And with this, we're going to be one Pokemon up. And now we're going to be two Pokemon up, which is going to be even better for us. Rockside coming through. Oh, never mind. They actually swap out in time. But they're going to have a Charger Buck in the back. And the cool thing here is that I have my own Charger Buck still in the back. And I have a shield advantage. So basically, there's no way for the opponent to win this game anymore. And the cool thing as well, especially with like four turn moves, it is so easy to time your charge moves. Basically, the only play for the opponent would be to catch a charge move. I know that they're still stuck in this matchup at this point. But um, you basically, what you're going to see me do afterwards, can just wait until the opponent is in the middle of their own fast move animation because they have nowhere to go. You see it here. I waited out a little bit. The opponent went for the wall switch. So I went for my own charge move. I don't lose anything by doing this. And I can just go ahead and do basically the, ex the exact same thing for the next matchup as well. We see the Exeter coming through. I'm going to wait out here. You see me here seeing that the opponent goes for the fast move. And so I can get the knockout. And with this, is going to be a very good game. Let's move on to the next one. We're going to encounter the Nidorina in the lead. And this is going to be amazing because we have Psychic damage with our fast move plus Psychic as well. And yes, I know that this um, video might ruin the cup for a lot of people if they actually... Like, if this team were going to be a little bit more common, Chansey is going to be a very, very solid pick for this kind of format. I would imagine that maybe people are going to start running some counter users in the lead or whatever, which would be a little bit more tricky for Chansey. But, like, Chansey with Zen Headbutt and Psychic is just also so annoying for all the hard answers for this Pokemon, which is just mad. So, yeah, this Pokemon is just kind of wild. Here we're going to see as well the opponent used the shield and still are uh, lower in terms of the health that they have. Plus, I can even reach another Psychic here. I can survive this move. It's just a Poison Fang. And so, with this, I will be able to get both shields from the opponent, most likely. Or maybe get the knockout list here. If this is even enough, though, let's find out here. It is not enough, so we can swap out here. I can actually get the farm down with my Charger Bug. But with this, I got rid of a lot of time from the clock in general. I get some energy here. And I have a shield advantage. I don't have switch advantage, which is going to be a little bit tricky, as the opponent has the Pylo Swine in the back. But we can still go ahead and use a shield here because I can still get to another move with my Charger Bug, which is going to be amazing. But let's find out what the opponent is going to do with this. I can just go for the Exeter. The Exeter is going to be able to connect. And so now I should be able to just farm them down, hopefully, with my Dusk Clubs. I will be able to just let this move go through. They can knock me out, but Faint Attack is going to get this knockout. And so let's see what they have in the back. It's going to be the goal bet. It's still not over, though, because this matchup is kind of neutral. I decide to no shield the first one here because they are always going to go for the bait and they did go for the bait again and this is going to be amazing because I can go for the ice punch they decide to use a shield and I went for a little bit of a risky play here I would say I decided to use a shield as well 
The opponent goes for the Poison Fang, which is another bait, of course, and I can go for the return, but they can still reach another Poison Fang. Is this going to knock me out with double debuffed? It is not, and so we can go for the return. Totally unnecessary. I could have just went for the Ice Punch, would have been fine, but that doesn't matter, so let's move on to the next one. Chansey against Golbat. Again, we're going to have a Poison type against our Chansey, which is kind of fine. They swap out into the Dragonair. I'm just going to take this matchup. I can easily take a shield here. Chansey basically can guarantee you shield advantage, especially like nearly every scenario. Like it's pretty bad in the two shield scenario. Chansey is not really a Pokemon that needs to use shields or kind of wants to use shields. But if you just don't use any shields, this Pokemon is absolutely overpowered for this meta. We can go for a Psychic Bait. Let's see if they're going to fall for it. They do fall for it. And with this, we can even get another shield most likely. And again, for me, I don't really care too much about this matchup here. I can like let the move go through. I can just try to go for another Dazzling Gleam. I'm just gonna try to even reach another move here against the opponent. I think I still survived this. We're deep into the right health. I don't care. And now I can go for another Psychic. Most likely not gonna get the knockout, but maybe get a shield here. Let's take a look at this one. We don't, but it's going to be fine. I'm actually going to stay in here because I kind of want to have switch advantage still and like, yeah, not to be a switch advantage because the opponent can align their Pokemon. But um, they're going to have a Primeap in the back, which can be a little bit of a trickier one, mainly because they have Night Sash and but uh, they don't boost here, right? Like literally, like I played ni the uh, Night Sash variant of the uh, Primeap yesterday in the video, didn't get a single boost with it and my opponent here two times back to back in the first Night Sash getting the boost. And this changes the matchup quite a bit because now we have to shield the next one. Now Counter even does a ton of damage. I go for the Ice Punch and try to get some damage here onto the opponent which does work out. So I can swap out and they swap out as well which is a huge mistake as they're going to have the go bat in the back. And so we can just go for the knockout with this judge and the opponent cleared their own buff on their attack which is kind of silly because like this we can just let the move go through and I can just reach another charge move and this is it's going to be a very good game here. As the opponent has nowhere to go, this is going to be able to knock them out and we can move on to the next game. Fine, uh, no, not fine game. Second to last game here, we're going to have the Charger Buck in the lead. And as we saw before in the matchup, from our Charger Buck against the opponent, Chansey, this is actually a matchup again that Chansey should be able to win in the Zero Shield scenario and does a ton of damage in general in this kind of scenario. And the opponent also gives me a ton of times uh, free fast moves, which I definitely really appreciate. Thanks for the sponsorship here. But as you're going to see, I'm just going to be able to farm up extra, farm up extra, get another free fast move in. The Zen Headbutt is a 3 turn fast move, so what he can go here is you can just go for one extra and then go for the charge move. We had 100 energy with a chance he can go for the Dazzling Gleam, doing a ton of damage. Hyper Beam would have been cool here because he would have put them into farm down range afterwards, but it's still okay as the opponent stops out into their Dragonair, allowing me to go for my own charge move. And I make a little bit of a mistake now. Like, I definitely make a mistake now. The opponent is going to use a shield, but I decided to stay in here, and I thought that the opponent would go for their own charge move a little bit earlier, but they don't. And this is very smart by them. But um, yeah, basically, I should have stopped out way, way earlier. And this is definitely something that I should have yeah, done a little bit differently in hindsight. I should have just swapped out immediately after my own charge move into my Dust Clops, but I didn't. And so the opponent has a lot of energy here for free. And it is just so unnecessary. Like, this was so unnecessary for me to play it like this, but it is going to be okay. We can still go for an Ice Punch here. The opponent lets this move go through. We are forced to kind of swap out immediately to catch a discharge from the opponent. And this definitely does work out quite nicely here. But they can still go for their own charge move. I kind of don't want to risk a CMP time and try to go for the full farm on anyway. So I let this Exeter go through. Let's see what they're going to have in the back. We will not find out yet because they have another charge move stored. They have so much energy here. But we can go for the full farm on. It's going to be the Golbert in the back. There still might be some play for us. Let's find out here. We're going to get the discharge onto the opponent's Golbert. Let's see if this is going to be enough to get the knockout. It is not in. So it's going to be so close. Let's find out if we can still win this game. If they were Shadow, it would have been so much better for us but they are not can we farm them down in time though with faint attack we cannot one hp one fast move away from winning this game but good game to the opponent final game a spoiler alert this is going to be another timeout game here for us we're going to see the vigoroth coming in and this game was actually one of my favorite ones so far um, honestly, you're going to see it here as well. We're going to have the opponent having... I think this is actually my team that I showcased yesterday, wasn't it? I think it was like Dusclops... 
plus um, the Vigoroth plus Primeape in the back, most likely. Well, this was definitely the team that I showcased yesterday, as far as I know. Um, so definitely cool if this would be a viewer. If you are, definitely show it to you. Um, we're going to see here the Ice Punch coming through. Ice Punch is going to be able to connect as well, going to get them kind of low. And I should be able to just farm them all the way down. They have to go for another charge move here. I can use a shield and this should be kind of okay for me. Rock side coming through, totally fine. I found them down and I'm gonna get out the opponent's Dust Clops most likely as well, exactly. I can overfarm by a little bit, go for an Ice Punch, but now I can realign, which is going to be great. And if they have the Prime Map in the back, we still should be in a decent spot. So let's see what they're gonna go into. They're going to have the Prime Map. We have the Charger Buck still alignable for this one. I can let one move go through here as um, Night Sash would have the potential chance to boost, but they actually decided to go for the Ice Punch, which is kind of unusual. I would not go for the Ice Punch as a Prime Map. Night Sash is definitely the the better move to go for because the boost chance is just more impactful in my opinion but let's take a look at this we can go for another charge move exes are gonna get shielded they are now two shields down i have still a one shield here and i decided to use a shield as well because i need to get some damage onto the opponent they're actually running cross chop though okay this was a move that i was thinking about using as well with my own primate but decided not to go for it because they were not able to actually knock out um the vigoroth with it in the zero shield scenario but they swap out now into the dust clubs and i go for a strategy which is super important here because um i didn't want to go into a matchup where the opponent would have basically their own um prime in a position where they can go for another cross chop against our chancy and so what i'm gonna do here is i am not gonna go for a charge move i'm just not gonna go for a charge move i'm around like three minutes into the game i see that the opponent does basically no damage against me so what i only do here is i just stall out and i'm gonna wait until on the top of screen and there's going to be 10 seconds left and then i'm gonna decide to throw my psychic and you see me here not gonna go for anything i don't really care what the opponent tries to do here i just gonna go for like i'm just gonna stay in here go for the zen head bump not gonna go for a charge move i'm just waiting until the clock is ticking up there because i know i have more health than the opponent's prime ape and here we see it already the clock is coming up i'm waiting until 10 seconds and i clicked on my move and after the opponent's charge move the timer should be over but because we went for a cmp tie i am still going to be able to get off the move with zero seconds left on the clock and this is going to win me the game and so this is going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to leave a like and i'll see you then bye bye